Hello and welcome to this week's newsletter. And did you enjoy the first hole of the big match versus Ollie and I? Hopefully so. I had a lot of good feedback of it. So like I said last week, we'll be going each week. The next hole will be released. So this week, you get to watch us play the second hole. And we both do all right on the second hole, to be fair. It's from the third hole onwards where kind of things get a little bit juicy, let's say. So keep watching every week to see how we do. If you've only got any questions about our game, well, we've played it that way, then please speak to us. Um, you will see from us that golf is by far and away a game less than perfect, that is for sure. But, um, so yeah, you've got that to look forward to at the end of this newsletter. Uh, but this week we'll start with competition news and we've got a little bit to get through. So we'll go back to last Thursday's seniors competition, the Dennis Orton Cup, where Mike Kippen won with 38 points, beating Roland Speed, Speedy also on 38 points, but on countback. Last Wednesday, Wednesday, the ladies had their divisional staple food, where Lee Danny, Captain Lee Denny, won Division One with 32 points. Vera Warnoff won Division Two. Sorry, won, Lee Denny won Division One. Vera Warnoff won Division Two with 38 points, and Division Three was won by Andre Bloomfield with 35 points, who beat Vicky Peak on countback. Well done to you, ladies. On Thursday. We had the midweek Stableford, men's midweek Stableford, where Dave Punter won Division 1 with 37 points, beating Andy Whithames and Graham Lawson to second and third with both 36 points. In Division 2, Jack Moyes won with 40 points, beating Colin Beer into second on 38 points. And in Division 3, Richard Old won with 39 points, beating Glenn Bowles on countback, also with 39 points. Well done to everybody there. Uh, Sunday, we had the October Mixed Monthly Stable Food, where Brendan Goff won Division 1 with 38 points, beating Brad McQueen and Glenn Jeremy into second and third, both on 37 points. In Division 2, Tom Houchin won with 38 points, beating James Punter into second on 37 points. And in Division 3, Dan Mitchell. Well done, Dan. Good to see that. Dan Mitchell won with 43 points. Well played, Dan. He beat Connor Harris into second on 36 points. Um, on to professional tours now. And on the PGA Tour in America, well, actually, it's in Japan this week. It was a Zozo Championships held over in Japan, but still part of the PGA Tour. Uh, Keegan Bradley won for the first time in four years. He beat um, Ricky Fowler down the stretch. Ricky Fowler not won for a few years either, but at least Ricky was showing a bit of good form again. He's had a good start to the season with a couple of top tens, including this second place. But Keegan Bradley, who's not won, you're saying, for four years or so, uh, he won the Zozo Championship over in Japan. But good to see both Keegan Bradley and Ricky Fowler back to form. On the European Tour, the DP World Tour, uh, Adrian Otegi won the Spanish lad. He won comfortably round Valderrama, difficult golf course Valderrama. And he ended up shooting 19 under for four rounds. So fantastic golf, that for him. A um, bit controversial because he's also a Live Tour member as well. So yeah. Lots of kind of uh, talk about that on Sky Sports. But yeah, he won by six shots uh, from a Swedish fella called Lagergren. So yeah, it was a good golf to see, but not a very popular winner by all accounts. Um, on the LPGA Tour, oh, there's nothing on the LPGA PGA Tour. It was that team event over in New York, wasn't it? And I think Nelly Corder won the individual prize. So yeah, that was on the LPGA Tour. That was on the Ladies European Tour, but held in America, strangely enough. But yeah, that was good. On the Live Tour, we better mention the Live Tour. Brooks Kepka won. He won an emotional event, but, you know, 54 holes against a 48-man field is not a massive victory, is it? But Brooks Kepka did win over on the Live Tour. Right, OK, let's move on then. Let's move on to this week's uh, second hole strategy. Watch the video and see what you think. So, second hole, 320 yards par four. Feel the breeze now, it is slightly into us, so it's always a bit of a southerly breeze there. Um, idea is to knock it to the red post, 220 yards away, and then wedge in from there. No need to worry about the downwind sometimes, which can bring those back bushes into play. But yeah, just a two iron for me to knock it down there, 220 yards. Oh, 
first, Ollie. Very, very good. What club have you got, Ollie? So I've got two, two irons, exactly the same as Duncan. I might just try and start mine a bit left to Duncan and try and get a little bit of a fade, but exactly the same idea down towards that mark. Nothing too fancy. We don't try and take it over the bushes or anything like that. It's a par four, two shots onto the green. Yeah, perfect to well. Great shot. Well done. Here we are then. Three peas in the pod. Me, Ollie, Ball, and the red and white marker post. Not bad. We didn't place them there, honestly. We did hit them to there. There were three. Two good shots. Okay, so we've got 117 to the pin. Yellow flag. That cold breeze is into us. So I normally hit my pitching wedge 120. But I'm going to go 9 iron just because of that cold breeze. Yes, it's downhill. So it takes about five yards off the shot. So it's probably playing 113. But you can probably add another 15 just because that cool breeze okay so i'm going to hit my nine iron 130 yards i think will be about right um, i'm going to try and keep it a little bit lower as well so nine iron for me So what you got, Ollie? So I've got wedge. Pitching wedge, he's got. He just, me. Ollie, hits it a little bit longer than me, to be fair. And I like to hit it a little bit lower, control my irons a little bit. So I quite like that little three-quarter low nine iron I just hit there. That's more my Ollie prefers to hit it a little bit harder than me. So he's going with wedge. It'll still be plenty for him. Lovely strike. Just turning over a little bit left, but should be good. Yeah, two decent shots, middle of the green. Well played, Ollie. Repairing his divot like you should do. Always good to note that. Always repair your divots if you can. Right, Ollie's wedge finished about 20 foot away from the hole. You can see my marker just about another five foot in front of that. So two ways to get in there. So, yeah. What you got here, Ollie? A little bit left to right, about 20 foot down. Slightly down the hill, but I'm going to race the past like the last one. Marker was in the way. Good pace. Good pace. Yeah, four four start. Maybe half a shot first than we want to be, but not bad. Having just learnt from all these, I can see it went a little bit more than we thought. Uh, this one's all about 15 foot then. Down the hill again. Don't want to race it. Focus on the speed, the main the ball where I want it to start, which is two balls left of the cup. A couple of practice strokes just to get a feel. That's two in a row that I've over read. The ball's not turning much on the slip, I don't think. But the pace was good. Tap in four or four. Ball square after two. Ball square after two. Did you enjoy that? Interesting, wasn't it? Yeah, both uh, good solid tee shots down to the red and white marker post. Good solid shots into the greens. Yes, the second can be a birdie chance, but it all depends on the wind direction. It probably still is a birdie chance anyway, because it's only a two or four iron down to the corner and a wedge onto the green. Uh, but it all depends on holding a 15 foot putt and we're not gonna hold too many of those in a round of golf. Uh, so yeah, that was a well played hole. We both enjoyed that one. Um, like I say, the third hole is where it gets a little bit interesting. So after two holes, the match remains all square. Right, that's it for this week. Thanks very much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you all soon. Take care. Bye-bye.